I'm recording now. So, okay. hi, Susanna, how are you? And she's from Argentina. I met her some time ago in 2010. And uh, this is Lane, she's here, about to do a presentation for some reason or other. She's quite concerned about it. Uh, but she did put it in LinkedIn. I so. met her yesterday. Oh, good. Okay. I've, oh, I, I've just hi, started recording on my end. I'm just letting people into the hi. room. This is, this is uh, okay. So I, I, a lot of people want to get in the room. I admit all. Here we go. I got that. Okay. So I hope everyone is joining. That's good. So this is the 14th of February, and we're at Learning Together Lane, episode 450. Wow, you are very special. Okay, so what I need to do now that I've got this thing, the recording going, is I need to give, hi Daph, how are you? And Hello. Vicky, how are you? And uh, I've got to um, give Lane hosting privileges so she can set up her polls. And while she's setting up her, how long will it take you to set up the polls? Well, I, I, I'd like to just set up the first Hi, one so I can start. Okay. If I can just set up the first one and then we okay. can go from there. Okay. Hi, hello. Hello. Where we're talking. I'm not really sure who that is. It's polite if you're if you just want to talk, uh, wait till it's your turn. And then uh, otherwise, uh, if you put yourself on mute and then when you need to talk, you can unmute yourself. That's a that's actually a good way to keep down background noise. So, uh, Lane is talking to us about flipped learning, and I'm going to make her a host. I'm going to make her the host. So the host has changed to Lane. Okay, Lane, you are now the host of this event. And uh, she might make her own okay, recording. I'm, I'm still looking for polls. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still looking for polls as an option. And yeah. uh, I'm not sure why I don't see polls as an option. Uh, let me see. Did now. you add polls as an option to your room? You have to actually tell your room that you want polls. Okay, give me back the. Okay, let's see who's doing that. Let's see. Let's turn, I'll, I'll turn off some. Uh, uh, I'll mute some people. No. Oh, okay. Let's see. Rehab, I believe, is. Uh, a pose is not a default. It's something oh. that you can use. Have if you've never used it before, they might not be. Oh. You have to. There's a setting. I see. Yeah, there's a setting. You might want to polls. make me host again, so I can. I'm trying to. I'm looking for you in the. Okay, I got you. Yeah, and also because I'm not a host, I can't. So, uh, rehab. You're making a lot of noise on the on the back. Okay, I'm just muting you if you don't mind. I'm sorry, but you can mute yourself. You can unmute yourself if you want to say anything. And. Um, so let's see. I have to. Um, okay. Uh huh. What happened? Um. So I'm sharing my screen. Mm hmm. So that I can begin. But um. In meanwhile, um. Uh. There are some polls, and I'm not sure if we're going to be able to run them. Uh. Mm -hmm. Out of this room, but uh. But I do have some polls. So we, if we can't run them out of the room, we'll run them in the chat. Okay. You think so? You can. If I can activate the polls while yeah. you're here, you'll be able yeah. to run the polls? Yeah, you can run the polls too. You're the host. Okay. If you set up the polls, you can run them. And I set them up from the email attachments you sent me? Well, you'd have to, yeah, you have to actually type it in to set them up. I mean, it, it's a little bit of a, it's a, it's a process and you can't, I already have them, but they're in my room and you can't transfer from one room uh -huh. to another. You have to put the polls in the room. And I believe I, I made a setting a long ago in my Zoom room to add polls. Okay. So on the, on the initial page, when you set up your room, you can add polls. Exactly. I'm, I've never done it after the fact, but I'm not sure how, and I'm not sure quite how that works. Yeah, I don't know. But in any case, let's make lemonade. I want to start. Okay. There you go. <laughs> welcome. Welcome to, you. welcome 
you, Sofla. I've actually presented this before, right here at Learning Together. I presented Sofla, I don't know, a year or two ago. Um, I think we had two people, <laughs> three, <laughs> and I had just come up with this idea by putting pieces together from all different things I'd done online. But now, three years later, I've done so much more with it that I decided to re-up it and present it again. So if anyone wants the history of SOFLA, you can find the old learning together and you can compare the two. I'll put the out. link in the chat. I'll put the link there. That's okay, the great. All it. right. So, um, so I'm going to show you, since it's not, uh, it, since it's not set, quite set up yet, I'm gonna show you the first poll. This is the link. Um, to the pre-work here, which uh, I can put, let's see, where's our chat? I'm looking for our chat, hang on one second. I wanna open the chat. All right, so um, I can put the link in the chat for you for the pre-work. And why is there pre-work? Does anyone wanna share with us in the chat? What, what is pre-work? Why am I talking about pre-work? What, what's that all about? It's flipped. What's pre-work all about? We're flipping. Yes. Okay. So the idea is that I don't believe in... Uh, I think that got messed up. Those links got messed up. What did I do? I think I messed up. Okay. The, um, the pre-work uh, is something I would like you to have done. And so... What I'm going to ask you, this is the first poll, and you should see it on the PowerPoint now, okay? So on the PowerPoint, I think I put those links in incorrectly, but we need it. All right, so poll one, did you do the pre-work? Yes or no? And tell the truth. You can put your answer in the chat if there's no poll set up yet. Otherwise, launch poll one. Okay, yes or no? There are only two answers. You either did it or you didn't. My Be thumbs honest. are up. Be honest. Now, I know 16 people did it. <laughs> uh, I've got to get back to the chat so I can. I and six, to manage for two minutes. 16 I let is in. great. Okay. So, yeah, I think you're busy. You're busy, Vance. You don't have to participate because you, you're busy being a host. Okay. That's okay. I, you know, right. I'm, I'm so in my account. I, I don't see where to add polls, unfortunately. Yeah, it's a, I think it's not something you can do like at this point. It's yeah. all right. Okay. So everybody okay. see, I put them in my PowerPoint. The, the polls are in my PowerPoint. So let, we'll just go with the chat. It's a small group, so it's okay. The last time this happened, there were 60 people and we couldn't, the polls didn't tell us anything. But I can see from the chat that a lot of you did the pre-work. But I'm going to tell you, if you put no, you gotta go and do it now. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you the link again. That's the link. There's a bit.ly and there's a short, uh, short Google link. So please go and the pre-work has three parts. I'm only asking you to do the second part. The first part is a video of me, which you don't need because hi. And the last part is to read an article and you don't have time to do that. So do the middle part, which is I think four questions. So go bye bye. And you won't miss much because the next two slides are two slides that I always use in my presentations and whether I'm talking about SOFLA or not. And so uh, you won't you won't miss anything with those two slides. So would you please now go and do the pre-work? Bye-bye. If you didn't do it, we'll see you in a minute. Bye. Okay. Now, those of you who did the pre-work, this is really important. You know you want them to do pre-work for flipping. Otherwise, the whole model falls apart. So what you have to do is not be punitive. If people don't do the pre-work, then you make sure they do it, but you're firm, but there's no penalty about it. And you do something else while they're doing it. And you say, oh, but don't, they'll never do the pre-work. Yeah, they won't if you don't handle it this way. And so what happens is while they're while they're doing the pre-work, you can do something else, which means over time, even if they're adults, and especially if they're kids, peer pressure, oh, you didn't do it, you didn't do it, or FOMO, fear of missing out, fear, <laughs> fear of missing out, okay? So um, 
the links are right there on the slide uh, for the pre-work, okay? Now, we'll go to the two slides that I said I was gonna do while they're doing the pre-work, okay. So I have a mantra that I use for every presentation and the mantra is create fertile spaces. And why do I say that? I say that because I think that we are focused too narrowly on covering curriculum, meeting standards, delivering instruction. We need to instead have a very leaders. So think about Bloom. What's at the top of Bloom? Create. So we need to be creator. And so online and you haven't ended, you're going to have to do some creating, right? There's some things that didn't exist that are going to exist because you put them there. So we're going to be creating. And the spaces, the spaces are important because there's a variety of different physical, cyber, uh, mental, you know, cognitive space, psychological space. Everyone's talking about social, emotional learning. Those are spaces and now what we're adding here is the cyber piece is getting huge because you're going to be, or you are already online now. So the spaces are changing, but the key is really the middle one, which is fertile. So you're going to be creating, how do you make them fertile for teaching and learning? So into much more detail uh, that I'm giving on Friday and probably again in the future, but these are the four E's. So create fertile spaces with the four E's. So since this is a mantra, we have to say it. So you don't have to turn on your mics, but if everybody can just say, uh, if you can just say, create fertile spaces. It's a mantra, create, create fertile, fertile spaces. spaces. And, and what I find is that if you focus on that, that the curriculum and the standards and the instruction fall into place better if you make your main focus be creating fertile spaces, okay? And then I'm just gonna briefly show you the rationale behind it. So the first one is equity. And for equity, equity gives students access to instruction, curriculum, and assessment. Now for online, we already have equity issues in person, but online there are tremendous equity issues. How can you even begin if students don't have access to your instruction because they don't have the technological tools in their home or and they can't go to the library? What are they going to do? So that's number one issue that you need to attend to. It's different for all of you in your context. The second is enrichment. Enrichment fosters motivation, integrative and intrinsic, because if you don't have that, if you don't enrich your instruction, Remember, you're competing with everything, the videos, the clips, the games, the chit chat, and you're trying to do instruction. So you have to make it enriched. And in, a, in order to make it less than instrumental, more than instrumental motivation, you want them not just to think about points and grades, you want them to think about uh, their learning. Okay, and then if you do that, they'll be more engaged. And if they're engaged, they're more likely to participate. If they're motivated, they get engaged, then engagement leads to participation. And if they're not participating online, you're done. I mean, they could act like they're there, but they're not there. Right now, there's a bunch of you here. Some of you could be, you turned, you turned it on and uh, you left the room, you're in the kitchen making coffee, not listening to me. How would I even know, right? So this is, uh, this is gonna be, um, you know, difficult to make sure that they're really participating. So that's something I have to show you about. And then the last one is empowerment, because once people participate actively, they feel more empowered to learn. And I always like to say empowerment is not a transitive verb. You don't empower other people. They become empowered because of things that you create, the spaces you create in the class for them. They become empowered and then they have ownership of their learning and that's the goal. That's what you want. You want ownership. Okay, so this entire piece is the subject of a separate webinar on online pedagogy where I break down this slide in great detail with specific suggestions for how to, how to get equity, how to get enrichment, how to get engagement, and how to get empowerment. Okay, so that's a separate one. So welcome back to the people who did the pre-work. 
And now we're ready for poll number two. Okay, so poll number two, I'm going to go back in my slides to get it. <laughs> Making lemonade. Okay, so poll number two, flipped learning. What is your prior exposure to flipped learning? One, never heard of it. You can just answer one, two, three, four, five. Never heard of it. Heard of it, but not sure what it is. Tried it. Use it all the time or can turnkey for others. Just write your number. Write your number. Where are you with flip learning? So I get some idea. <laughs> three, 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 three. Okay. A lot of threes. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm going to go back now through the slides. I don't know a shorter way to do this. Okay. So that was your prior knowledge. So a lot of the group is three. Okay. So, um, so what I want to do is go back um, and I'm going to do this very quickly since most of you already are familiar with flipping, but this is the original definition. I was one of the authors back in 2014 um, and you can see it here. And we, um, we wrote it in a, in a bloom kind of way. If you look at the very end where it talks about um, the group space being transformed into a dynamic interactive learning environment where the educator guides students as they apply concepts. Oh. Okay. Uh, I somehow got, it says I'm muted, but I'm not. Sorry, muted. Okay. my fault. Uh, okay. Oh. All right. So, um, so if I were writing this definition today and if I were revising it, I would add an important piece that has to do with SOFLA, which is if you read in the very beginning of the definition, it says direct instruction moves from the group space to the individual space. What you really need to add there is that the direct instruction piece or whatever you're flipping, and later I'll show you, you can flip a lot more than just direct instruction. <laughs> but whatever you flip has to also be an interactive learning environment and dynamic just as dynamic as the in-class portion, the out-of-class portion, all right? And that's what I'll be showing you today a little bit with SOFLAs, how to make that out-of-class piece be so compelling uh, that they'll be engaged in it, all right? And um, the other piece is the second, the second one, learning culture. For each one of these, I just want to see if I can show you. Um, I want to do a new share. And this is the definition of flipped learning. So this is the PDF, which you can freely use and share. Um, and it has these pillars and the learning culture, you see there are only two. Well, I'm proposing to add a third one for the learning culture, which is I create fertile spaces for learning uh, in a digital, uh, digital set, not just a physical sense, but a digital sense and uh, psychological sense, et cetera, okay? And the link for that, I have a collection of links right next to me, uh, ready to pop in, and thank you for reminding me. I feel like I'm directing an orchestra here, but I have it. Okay, let's see if I can not mess up this link when I copy it and paste it. Boom, that's the link to that, okay. Uh, now I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint and show you, there we go. All right. So basically that's uh, flip. Now that's just the starting point of all of this. All right. So the next piece is um, poll three. So poll three, I'm not going to go back up and show you. Poll three is how do you currently deliver your instruction online if you do? Number one, there's going to be three. Number one, asynchronous. Number two, synchronous. Number three, both. Oh, and there's number four is I need a dictionary. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so asynchronous is number one. Number two, synchronous. Number three, both. Or I need a dictionary just because I like to be funny. I try to be funny. Not so funny because there are people who are not familiar with those terms, but I think the 
here with Learning Together, people found, found their way through Learning Together, you probably know, them. okay. So, um, so here's my pitch to you. By the time you leave this session, I think, in fact, one of my colleagues did this. She took this session and she's down the hall, well, not anymore down the hall, but down the hall from me. And she did, she's got, she first wouldn't do anything online. I love her, she's dear, but she wouldn't do anything online. Then she was had to do online this fall for a variety of complicated reasons, not COVID. And then uh, she taught only asynchronously, done. And she took this webinar now because she knows I'm doing synchronous. And she said, oh, you really convinced me. I've got to do something synchronous with my students. <laughs> so I'm hoping I'll convince you too. All right. So I see most of you are doing both, which is great. All right. So this is Sofla. If you're a big fan of screenshots, this is your one. So take your nice screenshot. I love to take screenshots now. I use Snagit. But uh, anyway, these are the eight steps. I'm going to take you very quickly through the eight steps. Because if you want to know more about like how I actually do it for each step, that would take too long. So I'm going to go through the main ideas of each step, the principles of each step. Um, one of them, one or two of them, I'm going to kind of take you to a place uh, actually online where you'll see some of it. But most of it is going to be talking about it and how um, how to implement it in broad strokes. But we could follow up with any of this, okay? So these are the eight steps. I just want to call your attention to um, the four corners of the slide. I know you're looking at the eight, but look at the four corners. So on the left uh, of every slide, I have my mantra, because that's what you do with a mantra. And on the upper right, I have the SOFLA to remind you, this is a SOFLA presentation. But if you look at the bottom, I have MALP LLC and the MALP website and the MALP uh, logo. So this is intellectual property, so I know it's a webinar, but if you do cite me, this is not published yet anywhere. So I'm working on an article, but I'm doing these webinars, so who has time to write? <laughs> but I'm going to write this up. And so I just want you to know I'm interested in how you react to it, in your feedback, uh, what you think, uh, because I will be writing up the eight steps as an, something, article or a blog, or if someone would like me to write it up in some other form, but I, it hasn't been yet, but it's my, my, um, my work. Okay, so I think I gave everyone time to make a screenshot if you wanted to, so let's go on. All right, step one, ready? We're just gonna go through the steps. So here we go. So this is step one, which is the pre-work, <laughs> which many of you did. Okay, so there are two types of pre-work. Now, I know a lot of you are very experienced teachers, so I'm not just talking to your teacher hat, I'm talking to your trainer, uh, professional developer hat. So a lot of these steps, uh, some of them are similar, but a lot of them split off in two ways. So I'm splitting this one off. So the pre-work is different. So the pre-work on the left is direct instruction. So this is a lesson. You give your lesson, whatever your lesson would have been, out of class, but with targeted embedded activities. Now, some people, and I've been reading recently, oh, Students are sick of flipped learning. Uh, they can't learn. The teacher's not teaching. Nothing's happening. But that's because of the way they're doing it, because it's working. OK, so it has to be a lesson. It's a lesson. It's not a lecture. So it's not a presentation. And I have hundreds of these lessons. If you want to look at them when we have time, you can see I'm actually going to show you a mini lesson in a few minutes. But the idea is it's interactive. So they they learn something from you, they demonstrate it through questions you ask, or a free response, or an audio. There are all kinds of ways to interact with them in the middle of the lesson. And then they, hit, they get feedback from you right then and there, the feedback that you preloaded for whatever their responses were. And then at the end of the entire lesson, all the data comes down to you. You can it, do a CSV and then you convert it to Excel. It's beautiful. And you can analyze how your students did. And that will help you to understand your, how your lesson impacted them, what did they get, what did they not get, which helps you figure out what to do when you see them or to rethink the lesson. So it's excellent pedagogy, it really works well. Uh, so that's the left. Then on the right side is the PD version, which I gave you. And the PD version is a welcome video. Hi, folks. Okay, I'm going to be your trainer, boo, 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 like that. Very short. 
Then you give them a Google form with a few key questions. And we'll talk about that in, on, on the next slide. You give them an article to read. Let them get informed on what you're going to train them on ahead of time. So that's not just sit and get. Okay, train me. I'm here. I put in the time. Give me my PD credit. Okay. And ask them to bring something with them. Because if they bring something with them, and it, do, it doesn't matter that much what it is, but it should be something relevant. So in this case, I believe I asked you to bring a plan of something you were going to use so that you could have it next to you while I'm talking so you can kind of reflect, oh, maybe I could do this with that. So you have something concrete to place these concepts onto while we're talking. Although it's not going to be a discussion like really an interactive one in this case. Although we could do a follow-up, I'd be happy. I'm always around. Vance knows that. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. So this, this is why I asked you these questions. So on a... When you're doing a PD, you know, there's a lot of emphasis today. In fact, we did it in New York State TESOL. What topics would you like more information about? And then people list their topics. And there's this huge list of topics. The way I like to do it is say, what's your pressing issue? If I know what your pressing issue is, that's telling me what topics I should be preparing to give you. It also serves to make sure that you make it clear, which I'm going to do, uh, what your uh, training is not going to cover because a lot of times I've had a uh, done training where I was planning a certain training and, and it turned out that their most pressing issue was something like my students, uh, my students have no technology at home. Well, that's not really my area to solve. All I can say to that is things like, does the family have a phone at all? But that, but you see, if that's your pressing issue, then I need to go, you know, I need to explain. This is a webinar about a model, and we are having an underlying assumption of uh, their ability to access, because that's not our topic today. Then I do share one idea. Why? You're going to train them, but you would want them to realize whatever it is you're going to show them, if they're not starting from scratch. They know something. Also, it's a good crowdsourcing, so they can all get access I'm very transparent, so whatever is collected in the pre-work, you'll all see it. So you'll all see all of your ideas that you put in the pre-work. So that's another really great way to start a, a PD session. I and mean, we're not starting it that way now, but if you actually were doing PD, you would do that. But you will get the pre-work if you attended this session. I, I think some way we capture who came, I hope. <laughs> all right, then I ask you to put on your learner hat. So you always want people, they're, they're thinking, oh, I have to train the teacher. Well, but yeah, put, see what you would feel like if you were a teacher and you were getting this. So you have to think of yourself as an online learner. What helped you? What helped you? And it doesn't mean it's going to be the same as what helps your students, obviously, but it still puts you in that role to think about it. And then the geographic is just because I like word clouds. And I used to like to know where's everybody and I know this is very international so I'm really curious to see where everybody's coming from and when I last looked you're coming from all over the world which makes me glad I did make it at 10 in the morning which is very early for me since I'm a late person and I taught last night <laughs> but I did that for you guys across the way um, so we'll also see where everybody came from assuming that the people who didn't do the pre-work go back and do it you can still go back and All right, now one of the problems I have is monitoring the chat. My students will tell you when I'm doing my synchronous, which I use Adobe Connect, they would say, Dr. M, look at the chat. Dr. M, look at the chat. <laughs> so I always forget to do that. So I probably ought to take a quick look at the chat here. But uh, okay, all right, okay. Now, um, the, next, um, the next type of pre-work is what we're gonna do a little more is uh, the play, I use PlayPosit. Now I caution you and I'll, I'll put the link. Here I go again, trying to do 10 things at once. Um, I'm going to put the link here. I happen to use PlayPosit, but I would like you to understand that my goal today is not for you to do, we're not doing tools, we're doing concepts, principles, and such. So uh, it, it's not so much what tool you use, but the concepts I'm going to demonstrate, okay? So we're gonna go, I'm gonna share, new share. And we're gonna go into a lesson on uh, PlayPosit. And uh, this is PlayPosit. So 
The way it looks is like any other site, you make an account. There's a free version and a paid version. Uh, the free version, the only disadvantage is you can't actually download your data, which to me is very important as a teacher. Um, it, it's, I think it's, I only know the dollars, I could say US dollars is, is about 150 a year, but I use it all the time for everything. So it's really worth it for me, but, um, but you have to decide what, um, whether it's worth it for you. So uh, what you have here are your classes and you can see I have mostly my, that's my grammar class. Uh, so I've been using it for, for several years in my grammar class. I have a lot of other classes. I didn't wanna make this overwhelming, but, um, but of course our class is flipped learning. So we're gonna go into the flipped learning class and I have a longer version, but this is the short version for the webinar. So let's go to uh, the webinar. Now here, I'm going to actually play a lesson and you have to answer the questions in the chat. Now, normally the students, someone said the other day, I can't click it. No, you can't click it. It's my, it, it, it's, it's through my screen share. <laughs> so uh, you can, you're not gonna click your answer with radio buttons. You're going to put it in the chat. Okay, is everyone ready? So this is me and I'm gonna give you a sample of what my lessons look like. Now, this is not for actual learners, this is designed for you because I always like to make things relevant. So I made this to teach you more about the second pillar. So let's go. Okay, here we go. Oh, the other thing is I do wanna change and make it go faster. You can make it go- Video lesson. You can make it go slower or faster. And this is, is your guide to creating a learning ESL. culture with flipped learning. Learning culture is one of the four pillars of flipped okay. learning. And I'm Helene Marshall, your guide. So let's look at the learning culture pillar. Here are the tenets of the pillar. First, that in a traditional model, the teacher is primary in terms of the source of information. But in flipped learning, we shift that instruction to a learner-centered approach. And so class time is more dedicated to exploring topics I mean, in much faster. greater depth, and it creates learning opportunities that are very rich for our students. Students become more involved in constructing knowledge, and they participate actively in class and evaluate their learning in a way that is personally meaningful. So we're going to take a look at all of this, taking a deep dive, and here we go. Some basic principles first. Okay, now here's your first question. So if you were paying attention, your first question is, which is not true of creating a learning culture? So we're gonna, what we will do in this session is turn it into A, B, C, D. So A, like multiple choice, A, B, C, D, which is not true. Just put the letter, not true. Careful, not true. A, B, C, D, what's your answer? Put it in the chat, which is not true. Read carefully. Which is not true. It's based on what you just saw about which is not true. Some of you are having difficulty with this. So if you put D, think about that. Creating a learning culture. A learning culture. What is it that is your focus on here? Okay, the answer that I was intending was B, okay? B is not true. We're not increasing content. Everything else is true. <laughs> okay, all right, now watch what happens. I'm gonna click B because that's an answer and I'm gonna hit submit. Now look at, there's feedback. I put that in before. So if the student's correct, I don't just say correct. I tell them why it's correct. And if they put A or B or C or D, there's a little answer explaining why. So all of that is put in in advance. Now, whatever they answer and they get their feedback, they have to hit continue or they can't see the rest of the lesson. Let's go on. Teacher talk. So the research shows that 65 to 90% of class time is teacher talk. This can be from directions and procedures, explanations and clarifications, or feedback and evaluation. So take a minute to self-assess and think about your own classes. 
All right, here's your second question. Now this is for you. So being honest, where do you think you fall? You see the statistics. How much teacher talk do you have generally in your classroom? How much of you is teacher talk? And of course, what, what I'm gonna show is that there's a lot less teacher talk uh, when you do SOFLA, if you do it the way, you know, with the steps, okay? So put your percentage, please. Just put your percentage. Put 10, 25, 50, 75, 90. What do you, be honest, you know, what do you think? It's, come on, let's get some more answers here. Teacher talk, what do you think? What do you think you've got? Okay, I'm gonna take the average, why not? Mostly 50, some went higher, some went lower, let's do 50, because to move this thing along. So we submitted our answer, there's no correct or incorrect. What happened? Oh, because it's a poll, it's not a correct or incorrect type of question. There, about 10 or 12 different options you can pick. You can pick whatever kind of interaction you want. And I use the word interaction because they're not all questions. If you go into play posit, you'll see. Okay. Um, now we're continuing. Let's go on. Our next concept is hand raising. There is some soft data on this showing that 80% of the time, 20% of the students are hand raisers. Either they're answering display questions, in other words, they know the answer, or they're providing unsolicited contributions to the instructional conversation, something they feel they want to add or say without being called on, or they raise their hand to ask a question. This could be about directions or about the content. Uh, so take a minute and think about the extent of hand raising uh, in your classes. Okay, now I have to just add this because I can't resist saying it. I'm on a campaign and one of the links I'm going to give you is uh, to uh, a, a post I did for Screencast-O-Matic on um, hand raising. I'm against it. <laughs> I'm against hand raising. I have on the campaign against it because the same people raise their hands and they're never the kids I care about, the kids I teach. They're not the one, they're not the hand raisers. <laughs> we need to teach them. This isn't all about the teacher feeling good because they get the answer, but don't get me started. So please, Answer the question for you. What percent of your students, be honest, come on, what percent really do? Ooh, ooh, that's first grade. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> right. What happens? <laughs> well, with flipped learning, there's no hand, with SOFLA, there's no hand raising. There isn't any. You'll see why. Okay, I'm going to go with 20. That's what a lot of people put. And again, there's no correct or incorrect. We submit and we continue. is the way we're doing right now they watch their video lesson and they get feedback from me on each question they answer and you can see the green are the ones that they got correct and the red the ones that they had trouble with this is a question of with 31 students and also they can give feedback so I can see their score on the questions and they can rate the video she gave it a five out of five which is great and then she but she gives a lot of comments about what was hard for her what what she didn't understand etc so feedback in both directions which enables me to differentiate instruction and okay i stopped this is me live hello i stopped the video because i want to show you something this is what you get this is the pig but this is what you get do you see the green and we know okay i taught it they got it they gave me the good answers I don't have to worry. Where the red, oh boy, when they come to the synchronous piece, we got to work on that. Okay? We got to work out. So, also, it's important for them to give you feedback at the end of the video lesson. How did, it, how did it go? What questions they still have? So, there's a lot of interaction. Remember, we talked about making the out of class piece dynamic, interactive, and engaging. Really important to do that. This does that. Okay, and we're going to finish it up now. And scaffold it properly. Well, give me your feedback. All right, this question, true or false? True or false? Easy question, easy peasy. Just put it in the chat, easy peasy. Put your answer in the chat. Okay, of course it's true. Okay, so we submit. Now, I said, yes, this is what you're doing right now, responding to demonstrate mastery. 
So meta level. So I'm doing that for you, but it's also what I do for, for the students. Okay. Feedback, and we can discuss flipped learning together. Okay, now there's one more question for you. I don't know if you realize what's coming next. Yes, Edpuzzle is similar. I happen to prefer PlayPosit, but Edpuzzle's great for K-12. Okay, please give me feedback. You can put loved it, liked it. You just put the words here. Loved it, liked it, average, disliked it, hated it. What did you think of what PlayPosit? We're done with it. We're gonna go away now, do other things. What did you think? <laughs> Okay, some of you aren't answering. All right, I'm gonna do liked it. I'm not gonna go overboard here. So I'm just gonna submit it. Now, the next thing, notice it says next because we're at the end. You can't continue, we're at the end, but there is something next. Next is free response. You remember that student that I showed you at the end there that she had comments for me? This is where you can make comments. Now, of course, you can't fill it in on there, but uh, so we're just gonna exit we're done. Um, but you can put something in the chat if you want. Uh, free form feedback, an explanation of why you said you liked it or loved it or disliked it. And this is where I get really good information. Some students say, I disliked it because I really still don't understand passive voice. And I know that the way I did passive voice, I thought was clear, but it wasn't. So that section I have to redo. You know, I Passive voice is one of the things you teach in ESL. I know you're not all in ESL, but a lot of us in here are, just to let you know. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint now. And there it is, play pause it. Okay, so, uh, so that's play pause it. All right, now, believe it or not, it's 1040. I don't know how this happened. And we're only on step two, and there are eight steps. So I'll do my best. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do for step two. Step two is when they first, now, we're to, now we've done the pre-work, now we're in class. So steps two through seven are in the synchronous piece because that's what I'm focused on. But in the synchronous piece, remember, they've done the pre-work and you've engaged them. So. The sign-in activity. The sign-in activity, um, if you're from the US, there's a big, there's a big deal about a do now, if you've ever heard it. If you haven't heard it, don't worry. But this is not that. So let's see what this is. The sign-in, you must do on time. And I don't know how culturally that suits, but I do that. I do it at the moment because they know that there's going to be a sign-in and they want to do it. And some of them even come in early. And and peak and uh, anyway they have to put their name this is attendance that's how I take attendance and they they do the sign-in the sign-in can be very quick and simple there's a danger of spending too long on the sign-in like I spent too long on step one <laughs> okay so uh, if they do too much on the sign-in uh, if you spend too much on that you'll lose time for the rest of the activities but anyway here's an example so Last night um, in my multicultural class, I teach multicultural perspectives. They were supposed to read Nieto, Affirming Diversity, Chapter 7. Um, so I asked them a question that dealt with those concepts about deficit view, social justice, and can, what can teachers do about that? Uh, and they had to post an idea. That's the sign-in. That's something about a reading they were expected to do. Um, and they read, I say, read the board. I have a longer presentation where I talk about how to do the sign-in, but this one just gives you some ideas of what to do, what to put. Um, last week, the elephant in the room, you can't ignore it. So make the sign-in about it. How has COVID-19 affected you professionally or personally? And they had things they really wanted to share. I mean, we do cognitive, affective, cognitive, affective. They're people, we have relationships with them. Regardless, you know, of the thing you're trying to teach, if you ignore those issues, at your peril. And age appropriate, of course, I happen to teach what I teach. So I'm not going to give a second grade uh, version of that. But if you do teach second grade, you know how. All right, three weeks ago, um, I had shown them there was one of the video lessons, or actually, this was not my lesson. This was Steven Pinker. I love them to watch Steven Pinker. So sometimes I don't, they don't watch me, they watch him. And I have also some questions that they need to consider when they watch his his video presentation he's amazing and 
that does a very good um, video presentation. Uh, but I asked them, instead of information, what surprised you, puzzled you, inspired you? I don't like to put too much pressure on the sign-in, but I do want to know that they have something to say based on what they did before class. And then every now and then I just do a freebie and I say, what are your plans for you know, spring break? I do that for spring break, I do it for summer to the end. What are your plans for the summer? Okay. Of course, spring break after that, right after spring break at where, where I am, everything changed. Okay, that's step two. Step three. Step three, we do a whole group activity. This is the one I call the dangerous step. Step three is dangerous. And the reason it's dangerous is that this is the part where the teacher in you wants to dominate and you have to hold back and you have to make sure you do because you can have the most wonderful activities happen where they manage their learning and you're there. You're there watching, clarifying. And remember, you set this up based on the pre-work. So you can set up something that's gonna help clarify something that wasn't clear. Or if most things were clear and you wanna work on one of those things that were clear, work on applying it and practicing it. And you can use whiteboard, chat, audio, depending on what your interface is in the particular one you use. We're using Zoom right now. I use Adobe Connect, I think it's more robust, but I understand it's expensive. My university has it, long story. Anyway, uh, you want them to do it. Now, I'll give you one quick example of one that I did just so you have an example. Um, in my class, we were comparing structure-based instruction, and this is another one, this is a methods type, uh, and uh, uh, communicative instruction. And, they, and it could they contrast those two? I know it's not a dichotomy, it's more like continuum and you pick and choose, but I wanted them to get the concepts. So I had a whole list of characteristics. And as a group, the class had to fish which, which was which, which belonged where. And I stayed out, except if there were problems, then I'm there to help. That's what I mean by whole group application, all right. Then the next step is you must have breakouts, you must because they need time to be a small group and then you're not even in the room. Now you can pop in, which I do. I say, I'll visit every room and raise your hand if you need me. Uh, so they raise their hand, oh, we have a question. You know, and I always go to every group anyway. Um, and this part I don't need to spend much time on because you're teachers. So you know, you could do a jigsaw where each, each room does something different or you can do um, an individual one. Uh, let's see. Uh, do I need to, yes, yes, it defaults to whoever you talk to last. If you want to do everyone, you have to go back and get it. Zoom's not the hottest trick in the books, frankly, sorry. Um, if you do the same activity, then you, then that's another option. I'll show you how that works. They must be accountable in the breakouts. You can't just send them off or they'll chit chat, which you want them to chit chat, but not, you know, more like 10%, not 90%. You want them to do something. They have to be accountable. You know who's in each group. If they have their names, sometimes they're individually accountable or group as a whole. All right. Um, and how you group them, I'm not even going to discuss it. It's on the slide. Your teachers, you know about grouping strategies. Next step. Oh, sorry. <laughs> step four, the other breakouts. And this was actually the most popular thing that I did in all of my classes was peer instruction. And I have to do a shout out to Carolina Rodriguez Buitrago because she forced me, I hate to use that word, but it really came to that. I said, I can't, I can't, I can't. She said, you can, you can, you can. And she was there with me. She helped me design this component and pushed me. She helped me with the rubric for it and how to do it. They each took a tiny piece of English grammar and they had to teach it to the other students but only in the breakout. I didn't have them teach the whole class because that's kind of scary, but they taught in the breakout room with a pre-recorded lesson. So they used Screencast-O-Matic, uh, which many of you know, and they, and they did their little mini lesson. And they did it as a video that they prepared ahead. We uploaded it into our classroom. And then that, that group would, would watch the video with the actual person there who paused it and said, okay, answer your question, either chat or audio. They had to use three, anywhere from three to five questions in their video as part of their lesson. They're teaching it to their, their fellow students. And then at the end, they had to do a quiz. And I got the downloaded data from the quiz, from all the breakout rooms, and they rotated rooms. So, you know, depending on the size of your class, they would do mini lesson, mini lesson, mini lesson, rotate, 
many, many. And each week I had different ones do it. And they loved it. It was their favorite part of the course. <laughs> anyway, that's so that's step uh, four. Step five, you come back into the main room. Okay. Uh, when you come back, uh, you can, depending if you did the jigsaw, then everybody has to present a little something. They have the whiteboards. I put everything, by the way, up on the e-platform. I record the synchronous class. Every whiteboard, whether it was whole class or breakout, the sign in activity, and the last one you'll see in a few minutes, <laughs> the reflection activity. Everything, we're very transparent. Everything to do with every class goes up to the e-platform and people who are absent or people who presented and wanna watch themselves or they didn't pay attention to other, what other groups did and they wanna see what other groups did. You wanna be transparent. Um, so sometimes I have, uh, if they do a group presentation, if it was a jigsaw, they, they each do, but if it, everyone did the same thing, I'll randomly pick a group. I say, okay, group two. Tell us what you did. And then for the other groups, they, they can compare. Oh, we did, the, we did it the same way, except we said this, and you have a great discussion on the share out. Um, the other piece is peer feedback. And I'm going to give a shout out here to my colleague, to my colleague, Khalid Fethi, who uh, introduced this shack technique. And my students love it because if you think of a continuum from giving too much freedom to students or being too controlling, you want to be in the middle. And Shaq does that. Because if you just say, give your peers feedback, give them, they just say, oh, you were great, you were great, you were great. What's that? That doesn't help them. And if you say, answer these questions, did they use a period or did they, I mean, come on, you know, you don't want to be overly controlling. So Shaq is good. It gives them a four options. They can, to give feedback to their fellow students, they can either share something that they thought of that fits with what they just heard, or they can help them with something that they think maybe they need a little assistance with, and they can ask a question, or they can just give some kind of a feedback, general feedback comment. And my students use it for blogs, they use it for wikis, they use it for discussion forums, and they use it for breakout, uh, breakout groups and share outs, and they use it all the time, and I love Shaq, so that's Shaq. Step six, are we gonna make it? I'm talking faster so we make it. We're up to six, ah, we're up to six. Okay, all right. Um, someone asked how long my classes are. I, I'm very guilty. I'm guilty because they're long. But believe me, we take a nice long break. We take a break. And remember the beginning is a sign in and the end is a reflection. And so, you know, we do breakouts, but I have to confess it's two and a half hours. But I teach a graduate course and we only meet once a week. And we have to do 37 and a half hours, New York State says. That's my life. You do what you want. You can meet more often, meet shorter. It's not about that. Please, it's not about that. Try to take from this the principles, not the specifics. Okay. Now, step six. This is the one I skip when I'm out of time. I don't mean in the webinar, <laughs> I mean in class. And, and, and if I skip it, I regret it. And I'll tell you why. You know how the big complaint about flipped learning is, they don't do the pre-work? Well, we address that a little bit by making the pre-work exciting. And by the way, I usually put cartoons and jokes and all kinds of fun things in my lesson related to the material. And so that's another reason they say, oh, didn't you like that cartoon she put? What cartoon? Oh, you didn't watch her lesson? <laughs> okay. Anyway, this is the other end of it. The other end of it is you have to motivate them to want to do the work outside of class. You have to motivate them. So this is the preview discovery. And this is great, a great step because this is where you take a look ahead of time at what's next. What's the next piece of your course. So you can do a PDF right in there of your textbook if you want. Um, and if I, there's something I just learned about, which you might find interesting, which is Peruzal. I'm going to put it in the chat because I have no prepared link about it. It's Peruzal. Um, so uh, that's interactive textbooks like social media. I talk about it in my other webinars. But anyway, um, if you use that or whatever you use for any textbooks or articles they read, you look at it ahead of time. You upload some PDF piece of it. 
and you kind of ask them questions and you know they don't know the answer yet because they haven't studied it. And you say, oh, well, you're gonna learn about that. That's what you're gonna learn about. That's what's in my lesson. And you, know, you get them familiar with new terms and concepts maybe ahead of time. So you can say, you're gonna find this term, countable, uncountable. You might not know what that means. So I give them a little quickie on countable, uncountable, an egg, 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 whatever, you know, something like chicken, chicken, whatever. And, and just to give them an idea. And then they get interested in the topic. Oh, I'm gonna learn about that. I don't know about that. You know, because that's one of the typical ESL things that native speakers don't know about. Um, you get them curious, you get them motivated. You also find out about their prior knowledge, which helps you think about, ah, that's what they already know. That's what they don't know yet. And individual students, you get, you get a little bit of the temperature there. So that's an important one. And unfortunately, sometimes I run out of time, believe me, I do, um, and, I, and I, I tend to skip that because that's the only skippable step. Um, the rest of it, you absolutely have to do. So let's go to, to seven. Seven is the reflection page. Remember the sign in, that's attendance. Reflection is you stayed the full time, you've benefited from the class, you're heading out the door. So it's the final whiteboard activity. They, have, they can't just say, learned a lot, I erase it. If they put great class, I erase it. And they know that, my students know that now. It has to be substantive. And some of them give like five things. I say, no, one, you have to pick one thing. I know you learned a lot. And we have this thing in the US, it's called an exit ticket, which I can't stand. So before they leave, oh, you have to tell me three things that did da, da, da. No, 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 you want it to be free. You want it to be free. Uh, so you just wanna know, I call it the what sticks. What sticks from today? What sticks? And then, of course, you see what sticks. It's on a whiteboard. You capture it and you put it up on the platform. So they see what was sticking for each other student. It's not just from the, to the teacher. My focus is always not from you to me, but from you to each other. So that's why we do the reflection page that way. All right. And it can relate to anything at all. We had a guest speaker last week. So uh, I'll tell you about that in my other webinar, but, uh, but the, um, the guest speaker uh, was, was, we had to end right about then. So um, I asked them, uh, what was your big takeaway from the guest speaker tonight? So that was the, that was, I did, sometimes you can be a little more specific because in that case, I really wanted to know their takeaway from the guest speaker because we had done other things, but I wanted that, okay. Um, sample course organization, I'm sorry, we don't have time for that. I was actually going to take you into my English class and show you how I structure the e-platform, the asynchronous part of my course. And I was gonna show you the menu, what it looks like, but I, I'm afraid that time is not our friend right now. Um, I can go back to that, but I do wanna get finished because I have to do step eight. So step eight. So the first option is give them an assignment. And here, I don't need to spend a lot of time because you can see on the slide, you decide what the assignment is. You don't always have to have a video lesson. You can have some readings, you can have a discussion forum, in, and you could do both. You know, you just don't wanna overload them. You don't wanna do one of these time and a half mistakes with online learning, it's very common. But pick and choose. If they're working on a project, my students have the case study, they're gonna blog about their data, that's the third option. Um, or maybe they're working on their peer instruction lesson or if they're doing culture, they do their expert project. There are all kinds of, of assignments. I'm sorry, somebody said. Um, that was for your students. This is for your PD. So for PD, I'm not gonna go into it in detail, but these are options for PD, you can ask uh, them to write a note to themselves, to their administrator, and to me, the trainer, of something that they want to note from the training. You could do that today. Uh, always communicate, ongoing. Once you've trained someone, they're always in your life. I'm always in your life. Sorry, I'm here. You can always find me. I exist 24-7. Now you met me. Ha! Okay. Now, um, and then sometimes there's a group activity where you get together the administrators or whoever it is gets together in their group and they talk about how to go forward. You can use the five, 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 five. What are you gonna do in the next five days, five weeks, five months, five years? Um, as a result of what you've learned, um, you can have them do a questionnaire about benefits, caveats, barriers. 
of what they learned, and you can tell them about upcoming events to continue. So that's step eight for the PD. Remember, I said there are two pieces, okay? Um, the other thing I wanted to show you very quickly, and you're welcome to screenshot this, but these are cited, these are references, and they come from an article uh, that we published. I'm going to see if I can give you the link there. I meant to give you that. Um, it's so hard. It looks easier than it is to stop in the middle of presenting and put a link. Anyway, um, this is, these are options. Remember I said it's not just direct instruction that you can do all kinds of things. And, and I don't have, I'm not doing it now, but in the article we talk about it, we presented this at TESOL so, uh, a couple of years ago, and we talked about all these different things that you can flip. Uh, so if you're interested in that, we could talk more about that another time. But if you're not in ENL, it would be not as relevant to you, although you can see, though, that in, even in whatever you teach, there are a lot of ways to look at this. I see the clock is, is gone. <laughs> so I just, I just want to show you these are the four questions you need to ask yourself when you're doing flipped learning and you're doing a synchronous piece. So think of out of class as asynchronous, in class as synchronous. So what to move out of class, what to put in class. In class is your synchronous online. How to maximize comprehension and retention in out of class, that's asynchronous. You want them to understand and retain from the out of class because you're counting on it, right? You're not going to reteach it. And number three, how do you maximize interaction and differentiation on the in class piece? That's the synchronous piece. You want to make sure there's a lot of interaction and differentiation because you want to get to each learner. And then finally, for both asynchronous and synchronous, make sure you build in accountability and your feedback. Um, early on, I made the mistake. I believe me, I made so many mistakes. I'm trying to save you from making them. So for number four, I was doing a lot of accountability in the synchronous piece, but I didn't have the accountability in the, and feedback in the out of class. But you can see I solved that problem. <laughs> okay, so, um, so poll four, poll four is a very simple one. It's well, this is fresh in your mind. Would you be willing to answer a few reflection questions if I give you the link? Yes, no, or the New York answer, forget about it. And I, I think someone once answered, forget about it, but I think he thought I meant, uh, I think I'll probably forget about it, but that's not what I meant. <laughs> I was just being funny. I was being New York funny, okay. Um, I also want to mention if some of you teach younger learners, because I know people, they tend, and I, it's human nature, they say, oh, well, fine for her. She teaches grad school. She's doing teacher ed. She can do whatever she wants. Everything works great for that. How, but I've got, you know, kids in front of me. But I can only speak to my own. I always start with your own. That's what you know best. And so you have to take the principles and apply them to your context. And one of the people who took this same webinar uh, last week or the week before, this was what they wrote in their reflection. So if you write something interesting in your reflection, I'll put it in the next webinar. Um, synchronous flipped learning was successful at the graduate level. Makes me think that it's even more powerful at the elementary level of teaching. Students in the younger grades need interaction and engagement with the instructor. Okay, yes. So I feel like I succeeded. Okay, there is your link. So these are your links for the reflection on this webinar. And uh, I'm just gonna go grab, I, I do have the links here. And, and I know that Bitly doesn't work everywhere, so I'm going to try to give you both and see how successful I am. And I really would like you to do reflections. I know that 16 of you, which is a record, frankly, <laughs> that's the most I've ever had, did the pre-work. Yay! And I'll share those results with Vance and then he can share them out because we want to be transparent and preserve the data we're getting. So we're going to share your reflections, we're going to share your pre-work, and we'll, Vance and I will get together with a way to, to do that. And uh, if anybody has uh, anything you want to share, I know I ran over a little bit, but we got a little with the polls and everything, but that's okay. We, we made some good lemonade here, I think. All right. 
So thank you for um, thank you for coming. And if there are any links that I forgot to put in, um, I did. There was one more. I mean, I don't know what kind of time we have, but I did want to show you um, my. Uh, I told you I didn't have time to show my class, but uh, but I hear from uh, Vance that I can do a little bit more. So if you have to leave, um, you can leave. But I just I just do want to sh show you this, um, and it's. Uh, I have time. Um, um, what I wanted to show isolation you. isolation here. Okay. We're what I what home, I wanted to anywhere. show you. Well, I know that some people are on a. There are people who expect everything to be, at least in New York. <laughs> you ran into my dinner time. <laughs> they book me from, from ten that, to it's... eleven in their lives, and then they're done. <laughs> no. Yeah. Okay. No, take a uh, Relax. Okay. So, so here's what I what I would like to show you a little bit about my actual class. So this is uh, an example of what I do. I take I okay. take their can peer I, instruction. I, I'm sorry. Can I ask a question? Yes. Hi, hi. Uh, first of all, I'm really happy uh, and glad for your great uh, method of um, uh, eliminating everything. And uh, I want to know how can I adapt this for uh, people here in Egypt as they don't think that uh, the online or the flipped learning uh, is that kind of um, like the face-to-face -face one. So how can I start to, um, uh, to teach people here around me, especially my students, to get acquainted with the new perspectives of the, of the flipped classrooms? Right, right. No, this is an excellent point. And what I do, which I can't say everything in the one session, but uh, what I do is I have a section of my course, which I could show you here, it's called online learning tips. And I put in there all kinds of tips about what it means uh, to be an online learner. And I have one of them is a short video. I have uh, 10 tips in 10 minutes, how to be successful in this model as a learner. I don't say SOFLA to them. I don't call it, that's for you guys. I just say how to be a successful online learner. And I give them these 10 tips in a video with my webcam, always the webcam, I'm a believer in. And, uh, and I have the tips there. So I have it as a, as a video, I have it as a PowerPoint, and I have it as a document. Uh, because some people want to read it, some people want to just see slides, and some people want to see a video. And there's that. I also have separate, completely separate, the same thing, video, document, PowerPoint slides for how to use the Adobe Room, how to, how to use Screencast-O-Matic for your peer instruction. You know, always the how-tos in a separate section um, of my course is everything they need to know to the technology piece. And what I also do is I check in the very beginning how many it's their first time, and I always tell the the veterans to give advice to the newbies. And I say, okay, we've got three new people that haven't done this with us before, because as I teach, more and more people have done it before. But if you have newbies, you want the veterans to be able to give them some suggestions and much better than what I would think, because they're doing it again from the learner hat and they give each other advice. And then sometimes I buddy them up and I say, okay, your mentor buddy, if you run into trouble or you can always ask me. And if everyone is new, which I'm not sure if that's your case, but if everyone is new and you're starting, then, and I do talk about this, I'm gonna do another one on Friday for um, Learning Revolution. Um, what you need to do is you need to front load how the class is gonna be. Forget teaching them anything. Front load, because you've got ballot to balance the schemata. And if you're trying to teach them the language or you're teaching them content, those schemata they can't even attend to if they haven't figured out the way you're running the class. So you, it, it's unbound, it, people can't learn if everything's new. If they're learning new language, new content, and a whole new way of being a student, they can't do that. It won't work, it'll explode. So you have to forget about 
your curriculum completely and focus on working with them on developing a way to be a learner in this new creating fertile spaces place that you have made for them. And I, one of the things I always refer to is my very first presentation. You got me started now with your question. Uh, the, the, uh, the first time I presented any of this and the web heads were there, I will never forget. I went to the Brooklyn campus and I gave a presentation. I told them the time, you know, I tried to make it like this in the morning. And, uh, and they were there, several of them. I don't know if Daph, I think Daph might have been there in advance. Anyway, um, and I said, I called it online learning. Is it cold or is it warm? And I said, I'm gonna show you it's warm. Because back then, it was 2003, back then, you know, online learning, ugh. I want to be with my students. I want it to be personal, interactive, and all this. And my whole presentation was, look, look how warm it is. Look, there's somebody talking to you from Venezuela and somebody from uh, Abu Dhabi. And there you go, you know. Okay. So um, anyway, I just wanted to say that. Did that answer your question? A little bit? Okay. I don't know if he's still here, probably, whatever. Okay, now what I want to show you is YouTube, because what I do, and I, we also have an LIU place. I have a lot of stuff up on my university site, but I kind of like to use YouTube there because um, they can all have their own account, their channels and all this. So what I do is every semester, we post their little mini lessons, but they're unlisted. You all know about unlisted, I hope. So it's not private and it's not public, it's unlisted. Link only, really important, link only. Only, only that they have a link. But I'm gonna show you um, Andrea, just an example. This is Andrea's lesson on past tense, just so you get the flavor of one of these. ...of past tense, ED, This is the very Nias. first screencast to matter. So before we get started, I want to make sure that we are focused on the regular verbs and only the regular verbs. When we want to make a regular verb a past tense, we add the inflectional ed suffix. As you can see in the words wanted, looked, wasted, axed, played, and rained. If it ends in the letter e, we usually add just the d. But there are other times when regular verbs end in a Y and we need to change the Y to the suffix IED to make it past tense. So on top of just focusing on regular verbs, we are also only going to be focusing on the pronunciation. Okay, that gives you the idea. And the whole thing, as you can see, her lesson was, well, she had a little longer one. She went too long. <laughs> I usually tell them to do seven or eight minutes. She did 13. But anyway, that gives you a little bit of an idea of their peer instruction and, um, and how they use the screencast-o-matic. And they really liked it. And then to show you my home, there's a, there she is, Andrea who did the past tense one. I always do a, a screenshot of the class. This was a small class. I do a screenshot um, at the end, there I am. Uh, and the, we do a goodbye board. The, instead of a reflection board, we do a reflection discussion forum, but we always do a goodbye at the end, all right. But what I really wanna show you here is, is the menu. So this is the way I organize. I have to use Blackboard. I don't have a choice. I used to use Moodle and they forced me out of it and into Blackboard. They boss you around, it's a big university. But see how I do this? I have a welcome message when they first come in. This also answers your, oh, I've been logged out, sorry. I didn't expect that to happen, but it did. Um, logged out of Blackboard. Uh, yeah, I had to remember to go back in this. Okay, so this is the welcome message. I always put a welcome mat, and I do this as a video also, and it welcomes them, topics covered. I got all this from EVO the Electronic Village Online, and they taught me how to always do this. And I do, um, the other thing I learned also from them is the, the action items, weekly checklists, 
So here's a checklist uh, of what they need to do. And I give, I always give the item with a picture and a link and a little checkbox. So it reminds them what to do that week. Um, I'm a little uh, strange with all the different funny things I ask them to do. But, you know, so for example, peer instruction video, she was doing crossover nouns, uh, all of this, okay? So um, this is important. The other thing is, I just wanna show you the student view because you're looking at all kinds of things you don't need to see right now. This is the what students see. Um, so you can see Dr. M's grammar videos, assignments, tests and answer keys, surveys, missed class. If they miss class, they have to watch the recording and submit something to me. Then we have the discussions. This whole section is the peer instruction section. And I do one as a sample, always model for your students. There's the one I told you about, online learning tips. There are the recordings, the whiteboard activities, readings. I always give them a term and concept section. So it gives them for each chapter of their textbook what the terms and concepts are. Here are the PowerPoints. And because it was a grammar class, I wanted them to get the categories of irregular verbs, the patterns, the 18 categories. And then there's a grades and then the evaluation. So that was what I wanted to show you that I wasn't able to show you in the, the time frame. And here's the reflection. Oh, there's already a response. So this is your reflection from today. Isn't that a beautiful picture? You should always use free to use and share. And I learned that because I got a lecture and started feeling really guilty because I was grabbing things. Um, you don't want to do that. Uh, so you can get wonderful photos from free to use and share. And I respect that because I have intellectual property too. So these are your questions. What's your most significant takeaway? What's one change you plan to make? And then an overall reflection that's wide open. And like I said, um, that other person who wrote that about elementary was very powerful. So if you have something that you want to explore or that you, an insight you got, um, that's all I'm looking for. It's very short. It won't take you long. So I hope you all do it. Okay. Um, and with that, ah, here I am. Okay. So I want to thank, I want to thank Vance for giving me this forum with my neon palm tree. My husband said he'd always dreamed of having a neon palm tree. So I bought him one. It takes, you have to order it special. It took a long, long time to get it. But anyway, there it is. It's possible to have one. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you very much, Lane. Okay. I really appreciate that. And I, I like to hear not just one voice in our I know, yeah. I like, yeah. No, really, it's nice that uh, uh, Gahad, I believe, asked you a question, which is really nice. I, uh, I like to have people asking lots of questions. I mean, I know you were, know. you went through this on, you thought it was limited time, but I don't know if your time is limited, you can go when you need to, but. No, my time is not limited. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm I, not. I, 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 this, this is my morning, <laughs> I'm here. Yeah. Okay. So if you wanna do the gallery view and we can see everybody, that would be I, good. I've got five webcams showing. I'm not sure if anybody else wants to put a webcam up. And if you want to unmute yourself and ask a question, you're more than welcome to. Or talk, and not Jeff even a question, back. just okay. share. And Montasser is there. And if anybody wants to ask a question, you're quite welcome to do that. Alicia is just Thank unmuted. You. Hi, Alicia. Hi, hey, how are you? Nice meeting you back again. <laughs> and uh, I, just, I just wanted to ask Lane, which platform you use to organize all what you showed about the, where all the items that the, that the students have at hand? Well, we have to use, you mean the place where I put everything for the course yeah. is Blackboard. Blackboard. I use Blackboard, but that is uh, because the university uses it. Okay. But there are other platforms that might even be better. There's Canvas, for example, that a lot of people like. Um, okay. And I know that K, if you teach children, they like, um, they use Google Classroom a lot. Anybody else? Oh, I, I mean, that's not my area, so I don't really know. Mm -hmm. I, I love using works myself. And if I'm using Blackboard, because my school has it, I'll set up a PB Works 
site for my class and then I'll link to oh. their, uh, their content in Blackboard. So I don't have to put the content from Blackboard in the PB Works site. I just link to it. Oh, and oh that's that great. Kills two birds with one stone. First of all, they don't have to get onto Blackboard when I tell them to do this today in class. They can just hit the link and they can go there. And the second thing is I don't have any problem with uploading content to my PB Works site. I don't keep proprietary stuff on my site. It just links to Blackboard. Uh -huh. if, if you go to my class now, you won't see anything there because you're not logged in. But uh, right. for them, it works really well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great. Thank you. And, uh, and I also, I think my classes are short, are just 45 minutes, and I'm just <laughs> starting. Yeah. I used to, yes, uh, because it's adults and it's EFL, right? So with different contexts. And uh, I have a lot of experience about online teaching because I used to teach for Plan Saiban, right, in Uruguay uh, for six years. And uh, but, but I would use post-it maybe as a, a, I don't know, I like the idea of the videos and everything. I, I would use it as, as an extra activity, maybe for a, a not synchronous, right? I, I think that you use it in the synchronous context, but I think that it would be nice to use it in, in you, asynchronous. You mean the peer instruction piece where they make their own little videos? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. that could easily be out because you want to maximize the synchronous piece for a live interaction. So yeah, that, that would be great. You could do that. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you. And you don't have to use all eight steps all the time. You know, you, if you have, if you divide it up, you could, you know, use pieces in exactly. each session. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And the sign in can take three minutes. And the reflection can take three minutes. You need to think, you know, if you're organized about it, you still can do each piece. You just have to keep them short. Mm -hmm. All right. Other questions, comments, ideas? Thank you so much, uh, Leanne. Okay was very informative for uh, for me. This is the first time I come across this approach. Although I heard about it and it's uh, uh, applicable in many teaching settings, um, where uh, even if you go for a recruitment uh, as a teacher, they require you to have a great deal of ideas about uh, flipped learning. On you are uh, using the uh, latest technology and uh, I think it's a great idea if a teacher is absent it can you know it can be this material can be used by another teacher so because all materials are available and uh, as you said uh, just it's accessible to the learners yeah I think mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm either you or I is breaking up, but I just wanted to say that my whole thing is about the principles, not the specifics. Exactly. You, if you hold on to the principles, you're going to be fine. So the way you actually play it out in your setting could be very, very different from what I showed you. It's the steps that are important. Those eight yeah. steps. And it depends on the eight it depends steps. Actually, flip, yes. flip learning will work. It depends on the level of learners because I see from what you said that you are teaching uh, graduates, right? So when it comes to yeah. children, you have to adapt the material probably in yes. a different way. I but would the do pow Do you know pow You do pow -tune. You know, like anybody know pow -tune? You can make the greatest, most fun things with Powtoon and kids would love it. I, would, I wouldn't do the kind of video I do. <laughs> you know, there, there's a lot of fun applications that kids love that you can use for all the steps. In fact, probably I should get together with someone who can do this same thing 
take the eight steps and make it for the children, you know? Be a great, that's a great idea. I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> Thank you. And I see Jeff is here, is he still here? He's been, uh, you, you emailed me, he's doing some research. Jeff is, can I, do you mind if yeah, no, I go ahead, no, please, share that? Yeah. Can you hear so, me okay? So Jeff is doing his research. He's out in, where are you, in Australia? Mel Melbourne, Australia, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes it's one, and he's doing morning. research on, on flipped learning, and he was planning to do, like, regular flipped learning, but now, because of everything, he's going to do online flipped learning. And so Correct. he came here to hear about this particular model, but... You know, if you want to talk about your research so far and what your plans are, um, you you have some fascinating ideas about what you want to study, right? Yeah, I'm very passionate. I'm yeah, really excited, and uh, I hadn't thought about online flipped um, classrooms. I was five days away from actually going doing my research. I was going to a, an Australian university, and um, it was literally five days before I was going in, and then the university uh, shut down, and uh, as everyone has, and so it's gone online, but they're doing traditional uh, traditional uh, learning. So that was the end of that. So my pursuit is to find somewhere, and the world is is huge, somewhere around the world, and it's probably great I can actually do my research um, sort of in a virtual sort of way. So uh, I'm very excited about this space and, and flipped learning. So yeah, yeah. So thank you very much for letting me have a brief talk about what I'm doing. And, and maybe you found a new home here with learning together and our yeah, group, you know. Definitely, yeah, I'd like to come that, back and, now yeah. That you know, that you know this group exists, you can yeah. be part of it. We're very welcoming. And thanks so much for inviting me too. Thank you so much. I just put a link for Talon, which is teaching and learning in isolation. And if you want to, I think Lane did this, she put a, she just joined the, uh, Google Doc. It's a Google Doc. You just join it. And then if you want to speak to people, just set yourself up because we're all sitting at home this month and we're, you know, uh, for the duration of our isolation, we're quite happy to meet with people online. So if you want to come on and tell us about your research or whatever you're doing, just go to the schedule. I believe we're scheduled. The last thing we have on is April 19th. And if you want to just set up a time, we'll host you in Zoom as long as it's uh, between 2 a.m. and 2 p.m. UTC. That's negotiable. But uh, if you just want to set something up, we'll be happy. If you join the, the Google Doc, I'll have your email. So I'll contact you and I'll let you know if that's possible or if there, there's any problem. So if you want to just come online and tell us about what you do, we're more than happy to share experiences. This would apply to Montasa or anybody else who wants to... Uh, to share with us your experience during this time of uh, COVID-19. And we're here for as long, and the recording, yes, Montasa has asked, will the recording be available? It's all available at learningtogether.net. I'll put that in uh, learningtogether.net basically. And uh, actually, if you go to the, the Tallinn website, the uh, tinyurl.com slash Tallinn 2000, uh, sorry, 2020, Talent to 2020, then you'll see all the all the uh, archives are there as well. So they just happen to be at the learningtogether.net website. But basically, it's all there. It's just kind of something that's come up, obviously, in the last month or so. It's April 1st, I believe, we started it. And uh, it's going for as long as we're here and stuck in this crisis. So I hope it doesn't go out too long, but it, <laughs> anyway, get yourself in and uh, and we'll talk to you. We're happy to uh, to hear your experiences and to get you to share your experiences with others. So thank you very much. And most of the sessions, I have to say, are much more interactive. This was more like, I had to present this thing and get through eight steps. But usually these are more informal. Okay, so you should feel comfortable. Coming. They can be whatever you want. You can talk to us. Lane has a lot of expertise, so that we're very much appreciative of her bringing that to us. And then, uh, but on the other hand, we do have informal sessions. You're welcome to share. Anybody here? Montasa, Sandeep, Alicia, Jeff, anyone? I'm just looking at the people on my uh, my screen in front of me, and. Uh, uh, we have eight participants here right now. I think that's everybody. Kathleen is also here. Maha is here. 
Okay, so uh, anyway, you're quite welcome to just uh, um, come to that website, put in, uh, you, have to, you have to join it. We, we only accept credentialed people. But anyway, just join it and I'll add you to it. And then you can put in your, uh, your, uh, uh, your session if you want. And anyway, that's it. That's how it works. There's more explanation there. I just want to note that I put in the chat, uh, I had neglected to share with you the Screencast-O-Matic uh, link, which many of you already know, but some of you might not. It's the, it's the easiest one for students. They can use it pretty easily to make their video. And then also a, a blog that was published about me and my ideas about using video. Uh, that's a little uh, blog that they put out last fall. You might want to read that. Yeah, thank you, Alicia. Alicia is saying goodbye. So nice to nice that you came by. And uh, anything that's put in the chat goes into the chat logs. And if you go to learningtogether.net, uh, which I just put in there. Bye-bye, Alicia. Uh, thanks for coming. And uh, if you go there, you'll see all the sessions that we, we've had one every other day since uh, for the, the last few weeks. And you'll see all the chat logs and all of them have the hyperlinked URLs that people put in. So uh, we're just kind of keeping a record for ourselves. And there's uh, learning together is something we've been doing since 2010. And uh, so this is just kind of a coming up under learning together, but it's part of the learning together um, project. Any other questions, comments? Thank you so much indeed. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, Lane. This is Kathleen. I'm just finally, <laughs> finally saying anything. Uh, I've got an appointment I, I technically uh, have to do online here, but um, it's immensely helpful because we've just as an institute just been shoved onto the internet and then they just kind of go, go for it. <laughs> so it's fabulous to do it this way and rather than just do some sad lackluster emergency form of, yeah, well, you know, busy work. People can also come on, you know, you can also set up a, an appointment for yourself and we'll, you know, just kind of talk it through whatever you're needing to do. We're happy to, uh, to, you know, you set up a place to meet, we'll announce it, we'll come online and meet with you and help you. If that's what. Oh, you know. that would be so wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm glad you found us, Kathleen. Thank where you. are you from, Kathleen? Um, I'm here in San Antonio, Texas at the uh, Defense Language Institute's English wow. Language Center. Okay, I'm from Houston. Oh, you must know Heather. Yes, I'm one of Heather's Heather's friends and coworkers. Okay, Heather and I were scheduled to present at TESOL yes. this year together. Yeah. Yes, and, and I got her present message. Flip. Yep. Yeah, we were I got her message. Learning. She's she's so great, but uh, it would be wonderful. I'm going to try to see if she uh, if we can work out something to get more of the instructors on with you. Um, and okay. Heather and Vance and Good. everything that would be really useful because I think a and, lot of them are struggling. And let's let's be optimistic that next year TESOL will be in Houston and we'll be in Texas with you. Yes, yes, that You're would be great. You're only three hours. I looked at the map. You guys are only three hours. Only three from hours. Houston. And the way some people drive, two and a half. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So we look forward to that. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Wow, you never know who's going to pop into these things, right? Yeah, I think uh, Sandeep said he was from India, and Montasar from Egypt. Did you put that in the text chat? Correct. Yes, uh, okay. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm I'm from Egypt, but I'm joining from Kuwait actually. Ah, from Kuwait. Okay. I I work as a oh. I work as a translator, and I <laughs> yes, and I do teach online, you know, like voluntary. But I had my CELTA like two years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I am looking forward to like open this door of teaching again, which is why I'm interested in attending so many professional training. Good. Sandeep, where in well, India? It's a big country. Let's see. Yeah. Sorry. Hello. Where? 
Hi everyone. Uh, this is Sandeep from India. Actually, I am a, a teacher and a facilitator, a kind of a teacher researcher also. I am carrying out different action researches in my classroom. Uh, you actually must be aware about the exploratory action research, uh, which is actually full swing in few uh, districts, few states of Maharashtra. So I am part of that. And uh, uh, this year, actually, I've started this uh, learning online and teaching online also. So I'm not that much used to with the things, but I'm working so hard. Actually, in India, uh, that much facilities are not available and that are not made available by the institutes also where we generally work. So they are not uh, used to with the technology. So they are not tech savvy. So somewhere uh, we need to, first of all, familiarize them, enable them, and then actually we need to motivate them. So somewhere situation is so much difficult actually to deal with the teachers also and the students also. So uh, first of all, I'm working hard on that. And uh, actually I'm trying to explore the different platforms. Uh, there is uh, uh, Nelly's one course, the model course is also going on. I'm part of that also. So like this, uh, I'm part of the several programs online. Uh, I'm on the actually journey, I would say. So let us see uh, where I go. But uh, I'm so impressed by the Sopla, by this Marshall. So it's interesting actually to meet all the people online in this isolation. I'm re really to tell you, I'm not feeling isolated because of the uh, Zoom sessions with you. So it was, well, it is very great actually. But today I, I couldn't have... follow the whole meeting uh, because of some other obligations. You'll see the report recording, the recording is there. So Go ahead, Lane. One of the suggestions I have, because sure, I'm sure. all by myself too. For years, I've been the only one who did anything online. And they said, oh, she's that techie one. But what I found is if you, you get the early adopters, you know the concept of, the, of change, right? You need that tipping point. So if you can get just one or two people who want to try a few things, and then before you know it, the other teachers will say, what? Those students seem to be enjoying class. What are you doing in there? You know, do you know what I mean? So you kind of, you're so sneaky. You know, you get, you get a couple people. You don't try and get everybody. You don't have, it's you know, that. Yeah. Absolutely. Just a thought. You so know. the important thing is that, you know, the participants, exactly what happens, there, there are different categories of the participants are there. Those who are, you know, uh, somewhere they are a little bit, you know, that they're curious by themselves. So such uh, people acquire very soon the technological aspects. So they find it very easy and they enjoy that. And they uh, spread the same word to others also. But some people, uh, at some extent, they it is like, like a little bit, they struggle in the beginning. So they find it very difficult and they spread the same word. So it is up to the particip participant, actually, one who is participating and mindset of that. Not, I don't want to interrupt you, but you, oh, okay. The other, the other idea I have is to always have a buddy or a mentor for Hello? people who are just starting. You're back. If, if, if everyone, there you are. If my other idea, yeah. okay, is to always have a buddy or a mentor. I mean, someone that you do this with, okay? So if they know that 24 seven, you know, like I'm, <clears throat> I'm that person for a lot of, when I get out of here, I've got emails like this because I'm helping, I'm being mentor and buddy for a lot of my faculty and they know they can come and ask me any, they no questions too silly and I'm always available, you know? So if ever, not that you need to do it for everybody, but I mean, if you can get a few people who will be buddies or mentors, then people won't feel as isolated. Of course, we're isolated mm -hmm. physically, but people won't feel that way if there's somebody, you know? Just another suggestion. Yeah, I would like to say one thing about this, uh, all the interaction. So somewhere when I've started uh, this uh, online learning, I found that it's better than real learning because there are some barriers, there are some, you know, some hurdles are there in uh, real face-to-face -face learning. But in uh, this uh, online learning, uh, I find it very easy actually to access everything. And uh, geographical barriers are not there. You don't have any kind of bindings. So somewhere it is very interesting. And day by day, people like you, like Marshall, Nelly, uh, uh, Dr. Stevens, once Stevens, uh, sorry if I pronounce your names uh, in a bit, a bit uh, different way. So actually the important thing is that you are researching and making it compatible and customizing it. 
so this is very interesting actually for me that you are working hard to take the technology for learning to the doorstep of learners so it is very interesting part for me and i am really curious to know and i am going to research on this also that how can we reach to the learners and how can we make the make, make the technology easier to access for the uh, learners Uh, the video which i had seen of the stevens and nelly's actually when they had started exploring zoom they had posted on that uh, facebook uh, uh. it was very interesting they also themselves explored in the beginning and today they are so they are helping others to explore it's great thing mm-hmm. great thing so you remind me Thank of you. something i just learned last week from david rosen i just want to mention his name he's very active in adult uh, adult ESL instruction uh he has a a big uh list serv that he manages on technology in teaching adult learners and he said he wants us to make a crowdsourced spreadsheet where we list for online learning the equivalencies the limitations and the advantages and you know equivalencies okay instead of this we're going to do this you know but but obviously there are limitations but there are also advantages which is what you're talking about in some ways there's an advantage and that's we talked a little bit about the hand raising advantage that you get more of everyone collaborating instead of that hand raising business so there are advantages absolutely so that's important to remember the link in the text if you have it lane for what for or, david rosen equivalencies limitations advantages oh goodness okay hmm. um i'm going to go see if i can find that so i'm going to i think try to bring this to a close because we have a very long recording and uh it's uh nice to work in short spurts and also it's late for i am it's not too late almost midnight but uh anyway thank you very much for coming this has been uh, learning together episode 450. So we've been doing this since 2010. Lane is very appropriately the 450th uh presenter and she's been she mentioned she was here before. We you can go to learningtogether.com and you can sorry .org learningtogether.net. Sorry, learningtogether.net and you can see you can search in there and find her uh, her previous presentation. So anyhow, uh this is the 7th Talon teaching and learning in isolation episode that we put on or it could be the 8th, I think maybe it's the 8th. Anyway, uh we have more especially if you want to uh, invite us to come to something that you'd like to do, just find the uh uh oh, I might even have it in my buffer. Let me just see if Well, I've got my yep, got it here in the buffer. There you are. So you can go to that link and you can uh sign yourself up, invite us to come and visit your presentation. So they don't have to be presentations, they can just be discussions. So yeah, that's happy. what I was trying to yeah. explain. This was Yeah. yeah. Normally, well, not normally. We we have a lot Either of presentations. Way. Yeah, I mean that's we learn from presentations, we learn from discussing from one another. In fact, actually this presentation went for about an hour and something and now we're in a discussion, which is That's true. You know, there you are. <laughs> well, thanks for staying around for that, Lane. I appreciate you coming yeah. along and uh, and giving us I had a great time. I really do. I enjoy the discussion part. I'm glad yeah. I'm not restricted. They yeah. Those places they won't let you do it. They just say you have 1 hour to your webinar. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. And and so many people, you know, actually we're talking about uh, online presentations or online classes. I think it's very yeah. important that you engage people and you Yes. you in bring their voices into it. You know, I think we we had a, a last night. Did you come were you there last night for Michael and I? But yeah. we, we just made it a point to make to get everybody's voices in, you know, and make every make sure everyone spoke. That's the important thing, you know, I think. So Right. It, You're right. Yeah, actually, you're my mentor. You're, I'm still learning from you. I'm, uh, I've been learning from you since it's percolation to coffee, you know, <laughs> we learn from each other. We're learning together. So, <laughs> right, we, learning together. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. All well, right. Thank you. thank you. Thank you for coming. Mantasa, hope to see you again. Jeff, thank you very much. Hope to see you. Thank again. you so much. I'm thank you. Nice to meet you all. Thanks so very much. That's it. Okay. Good night. April thank 14th, you. 2020. 
Uh, and uh, that's it for us. Bye-bye. Thank you.